I'm getting ready to make the May Kimberbell Cuties table topper. This one um, is made up of a nine patch. So we have five blocks shown here in yellow that are regular squares and then it has four pinwheel blocks and then it has an inner border that is the gray dots here. It has four triangles to square it off and then it has an outer border and then it has what are called cornerstones and in this for this particular quilt it's on page 11 in the book this is for May and the fabric I chose I had a kit uh, from a I've had it for a long time and it's called Gnome is where your garden grows. I think I picked it up at my local quilt store. And so the kit contained the panel and it contained a couple of pieces that were part of the line with the ladybugs and the little gnomes. And I've got some other pieces of it here. And then some other pieces were put in by the quilt store to make up the kit. So I thought, you know, I'm probably never going to actually make up this quilt right here as it is shown. So I think I'm going to kind of harvest some fabrics out of that. And I'm, I'm going to still keep the panel. And I love to make panel quilts. And that will be cute all by itself. It does not need a whole lot. But I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get some fabrics out of this. So... I have chosen for my five squares in the nine patch, I'm going to fussy cut these little gnomes into the size that's required for those squares. I'm going to use these two right here to make up the pinwheels. This is going to be my inner border. I'm going to use this pretty light blue as my big triangles where the flowers will eventually be embroidered and then I will choose maybe use another um, fabric from here for the binding or um, I, I might if I and I know I have enough I may use that for the binding as well or maybe some of the green I will wait and see once the whole inside is finished to determine what fabrics I'm going to use for all of that. So, on page 11 of the pattern, everywhere it says cut the following, and it fabric one, and it says cut five. I don't have the sizes here so that you have to buy the book in order to see the pattern. But that is fabric A, and then fabric B, and sequentially, so on, alphabetically. Okay, that's the way I have designated my fabric pieces in order to put everything together. So when you hear me say fabric A or fabric C, that kind of thing, that is exactly what I'm referring to. So I'm going to go ahead right now and cut up my fabrics. In the instructions it tells you to draw a line diagonally from corner to corner on one of your squares that you're going to make into the pinwheel. You might find it more accurate, especially if you are not sewing on a single hole needle plate, meaning your needle can go back and forth on a zigzag if you set it to do that. You might find it more accurate instead of just drawing the line down the center to also draw the line on either side of that center line because then that is your sew line and you'll follow that line exactly. I have a ruler at home. I'm, I'm not at home right now, but I have a ruler at home and it is a quarter inch seam ruler and um, it's from Creative Grids and I absolutely love it and I'll link to it below. The Creative Grids ruler is a half an inch wide and you lay it you can see through it so you lay it from corner to corner and then you draw on either side of that and that's a great way to be real accurate when you're making these kinds of blocks I got a bit of a weird camera angle here but I don't have a GoPro so I've kind of 
wrapped the tripod legs around. <laughs> Make do, right? So I'm just going to take my square. Now I have my needle set to sew in the center. It really doesn't matter where your needle is set to sew. This is an Oregon 7511 needle and I am using just regular Let's see, what is this? This is Superlock 100% polyester. So this is an overlock thread, but it works fine. So I'm using polyester, I'm not even using cotton thread. And I'm just gonna put my foot down. And without doing any back stitching, I'm just gonna start sewing on the line. And then I'm gonna continue to do one block after another. And this is called chain piecing. And then when it gets finished, we'll flip them all around. I don't have my knee lift on. I need to find where that is. Things got moved around when the guys were doing new flooring in my house. So I'm just so much more accurate when I sew on the line as opposed to sewing a quarter inch away from the line. Because sometimes, you know, you think you got it and then you don't. Now, when we're finished with this, you will um, trim these down to the size in the pattern it says to square them to, and I'll show you how to do that. So you do have a little bit of wiggle room here on how it's sewn together. So I'm going to continue to do this until they're all done. Okay, so this is the last one, and I'm going to cut the thread, and then I'm just going to pick the whole string up and flip it around, and now I'm going to go down the other side. much quicker. Second time around. Okay, now we're going to go cut them all apart. So you can just lay them out all in a line on the mat. And now I'm going to take them to the ironing board and I'm going to press it once to relax the seam. And then I like to take them from the center with my fingers and finger press them open first and then press them with the iron. Don't use any steam on these because it is sewn on the bias and they can stretch and you don't want that. You want nice pretty squares. Now these half square triangles square up to a really weird measurement. It's not standard. And sometimes the easiest way to do that when you get these odd measurements is to fold your half square triangle in half and take that odd measurement and half it. And so take your ruler and put that half marking on the fold and then trim. And then fold it the other way. I know, unconventional, but you guys, it had a really weird, and if you don't, there's not a ruler that I'm aware of that you can get to make that work. Because most of these will, you know, they want you to square up to either a 
a whole number or one and a half or two and a half or something and this isn't like that so we've got a lot of extra it seems like but then when you open it up you've got a really good half square triangle and your points are correct see that that's what you that's what you're after you want those points to be correct so you can think outside the box on these and now it is the correct measurement according to what the pattern said to square it up to. So I'll show you one more time. Just take, you want to make sure it's fairly square. You know, you, you don't want it to be too terribly wonky. And if it is, it's okay to give it a tug or, you know, make it as square as you can get it. But just go ahead and fold it in half on grain and match up those sides and then take the squared, it says squared up to a certain measurement, cut that measurement in half and put the half mark on your fold. Okay, so it looks kind of funny, but then do it again the other direction. Fold it in half, put that half measurement on the fold here. Make sure I got straight. Yep. And there you go. So do that to all of your half square triangles. If you're not real sure how to figure out what that half measurement ought to be, you can take a little scrap of fabric and you can cut it to what the measurement is supposed to be. And then fold it in half and measure it out on your ruler. Whatever this reaches over here, that's what the measurement is supposed to be. That is half. When you're making your pinwheel, you want to lay your fabrics out so that, like I have yellow, green, and then I'm going to have yellow, green, yellow, green, And yellow green and this way you don't have you don't want green to green and you could do yellow green like this but then your green is in the wrong spot so you want what whatever colors you have you want them to meet in the center so all the greens meet in the center and they are every other one now when you put all of your pinwheels together, you want to make sure that they all are going the same way. See that? So that way, because it, you could easily make it like this. You know, if you were to do yours this way, and that's fine. Now all the yellows are meeting, and it's, now it's, you know, green, yellow, green, yellow, and so on and all the yellows are meeting but now it's backwards from the one I just made before so kinda keep that in mind as you're building your pinwheels you're gonna want them to all go the same way not have any two touching side by side and your colors to meet in the middle so that's how you build a pinwheel and essentially this is just a four patch so the first thing I'm going to do is take two of them and fold it over like this and I'm going to butt those seam edges up together keep the edges even so that these are nested they look like this and I'm going to take a pin and I'm going to go in one side the seam line and out the other and then I'm going to stitch them, the quarter inch seam allowance. And 
this is what you get. So you should have a quarter inch seam allowance right here. If you don't have a quarter of an inch, you probably need to go back, unpick it, and uh, do it again. So there's half, and then the next one, fold that over just like the first one. But the seam, butt them up together and nest them. Pin them straight. Not all over the place. So when you've got these like this, okay, now you want to have one seam allowance going one direction. So just give it a finger press and then the other seam allowance going the other direction so that when you fold them together, they will nest up against one another nice and tight, just like that. Now the way I put these together is I will take, this is a air soluble marker. I'm going to write on this so you can see. There is a V right here in this stitching. That V right there. See that? And where they meet is my target. So I'm going to make myself a little landing strip to stitch right on that. To match them up, I will take my pin and I'm going to put it right in the center of that V on one piece so that it's coming out where they meet. That pin's coming out right where they meet. And then I'm going to put it in this one right on the V again and nest those seams up tightly. You want the pin horizontal. You don't want it to the side and you don't want it pointing down, up or down. You want it horizontal and your seams butted up against each other really well. I'm going to pin the bottoms because they like to dance around. And on this one, I'm going to take another pin. So. Here is the seam allowance seam right there. I'm going to go in below it, all right, and I'm going to come out on the other side of it above it, like that. So that anchors those together, and I'm going to pull this pin. And now I'm ready to sew, and I'm going to sew and aim for my landing strip. When I get one stitch or two after that seam allowance, I'm going to pull the pin because then it will be anchored together. So I'm aiming for my landing strip. I've gone over the seam allowance. I'm going to pull the pin, pull these two together, and get back toward that quarter inch seam allowance over here. And if we did it right, it'll look pretty good. That's good enough for me. So now you want to set up your nine patch with alternating your plain blocks with your pinwheels. And I'm going to sew this row together, this row together, this row together. And then I will sew the top to the middle and the bottom to the middle. Together. I've yeah. sewed all of my rows. Now on this one, I want the seam allowances going out on this square. And on this one, the seam allowance is going in. And on these, the seam allowance is going out. And that way, 
They will nest together when it's time to sow the rows. Okay, when you're sewing these on, you're gonna do the exact same landing strip method that we did when we made the pinwheels. I'm gonna make a mark exactly where they meet on the V right there and right there, okay. I'm gonna take a pin, go in on the V, and then even if it looks like there's more than a quarter of an inch, don't worry about that. Just put that in on that V, level up the pins, nest the seams. If your seams don't nest correctly, you might not have it on right. right there. Nest those seams nice and tight, get that pin level, and then take another pin and go in one side of the seam allowance and out the other. Do the same thing down here. Go in one side of that seam allowance, out the other. And I'm going to match up the ends so that they're level. Okay. Now I'm going to sew. And if we did it right, it'll match up. Perfect. Just exactly what I'm looking for, just like that. That, that turned out adorable. Then you want to press this nice and flat with the seam going to the outside so that everything lays nice and even. Then we'll be ready to sew on the inner borders. Okay, it is time to sew on the inner border. Now we have a shorter one and a longer one. And what you wanna do is sew the shorter one on first. It doesn't matter if yours has a direction like mine does. Uh, I'm gonna sew my shorter borders to the sides first and in this particular one, you're going to want to put the border down to the feed dogs because on this side, we've got landing marks we need to hit. Let me get my little pen here. So we've got landing marks that we need to hit where these V's come together right there. Got to hit that and I've got to hit this one right here, okay? So I'm gonna do both sides. I'm marking where I need to hit, and that is so that when we flip it over, the border has exactly met that quarter inch seam allowance right there, and you don't tip your point and you're not too far away from it. That's what you're looking for, to land right there in those spots. So I'm going to put my border on. Because this is on bias, I'm gonna make this fit. I know the border length is correct, so I'm gonna trust that because this is not cut on a bias. And so it looks like it's too long down here. See, I've got some extra left over. I'm gonna put this on the bottom, bigger on bottom, and I will stretch this and make it fit. 
Okay, and I will pin the other end, line it up and pin it. Oh, that's not right. Shorted myself an eighth of an inch there. Okay, and then I'm going to pull it till it fits. And what I want to do is walk my fingers in and get it level and even so that that way it's going to work. Now I'm just going to aim. I'm going to set it up on my quarter inch. And now I'm going to aim for this landing strip that I created. And if we did it right, we hit that point exactly, just like that. That's exactly what you're looking for, just like that. So I'm going to do the opposite side now. I've already marked those landing strips. That's Air Force talk. <laughs> there is no shame in making yourself a guide. See how far off that is? I'll make it fit. Perfecto. Yep. Fabulous. Nobody taught me how to mark these guys. This is just me. These are my methods that I came up with because I got tired of continually doing it wrong. And I was like, I have got to come up with some way to make it so it's not so frustrating. So once again, I will sew with the inner border down. I've got a lot of room here between these two, so I'm going to go ahead and um, find center and pin that as well. All right, so we're all finished with this. Now, if you've got ripples and bubbles and a little bit of this, don't worry. All of that will come out when we get to where we're quilting it and we're going to add on the triangles and all that. This is normally the way it looks when you've got lots of bias seams with the pinwheels and everything, but when it's all done and quilted, none of that will show at all and it'll look great. So. The next thing we're going to do is put on the large triangles. Um, you're going to put the, the first two on on your short side borders and then the second two will go on your long side borders. Okay, now we're ready to sew on the triangles and you need to mark center somehow. So you can either put a little mark with a, an iron away marker or you I cut a tiny little notch that is going to be inside of the seam allowance it's not going to uh, leave a hole so that's something you got to be careful about if you do it that way or you can use a pin and I'm going to start on the border that was put on first and just put them right sides together marking center and you want to start right on the edge and just sew up all four of these Do the other side and again I already have this fabric backed with the SF 101 so that it'll be ready for the embroidery my needles sounding a little dull <laughs> sounds like a jackhammer <laughs> probably 
probably do for a change. Okay. Now I'm going to press these out. Match up centers. When you start sewing, you want to start way out here where they meet. So you want to start in that little V right there. You want to finish in that little V right there. So I'm keeping that V right there straight with my red line on my... See, that's what you're looking for. You want to make sure you have at least a quarter of an inch out here. That's your quarter inch seam allowance you're going to need. Now mine's closer to a half, that's okay. Very good, okay. So I've got a nice seam allowance on all four of where these meet. This is excellent. Okay, well now we are ready to do the embroidery. So when we put this into the hoop, this point right here is going to go on that alignment line for the embroidery design. That's it. Okay, in the next video we'll do the embroidery. Talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.